It's another beautiful day in sunny Tampa Bay. As the board is lit, feel the heat rays. Feel to feel the power. Feel the heat rays. Feel. I think the Yankees are feeling the heat. What do you say? Frank, they're definitely feeling it out on the West Coast, uh, out in beautiful San Diego at the neutral site, as the Tampa Bay Rays now are beating up on the Yankees tonight for the second straight night after a blunderous decision with the pitching staff in Game 2. That fucked it. You did, that, that's the moment the Yankees lost the series. Doing that candy-ass move. Well, yeah, I mean, Game 1 was, you know... Cole pitched pretty well, and, uh, you know, the offense broke out for nine runs, and it looked like— Well, Danny you know, Garcia was loud was this one run. Give him a chance. If you're going to start him, start him. Don't play this shit with— The, 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 the Rays are too good a team. It's not going to work doing candy-ass shit like that. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, Garcia threw 27 pitches, and, and uh, Boone said that, I believe, or, or it, it was said initially that— um, you know, with Garcia, they didn't like the way he looked. Even after he threw three pitches, though, Hap was already up warming up in the bullpen. And Hap didn't even know. Hap wasn't ready to go in. He said he was, he was totally surprised. And then Boone came out and said today that, that Hap was aware of the plan beforehand. <laughs> Sounds like the Mets. Well, you know, Bob, Aaron Boone is not the manager of the Yankees. <laughs> well, it's Brian Cashman, but also the, uh, the analytical department was getting – beaten on after last night's game you that, know, was an, that was a decision by the analytics you part. know it's good to do analytics before the game and have the stats for analytics here and there but if you're a slave to analytics you're going to lose just as much as you're if you ignore analytics you're going to lose you got to have a balance you got to have the gut and aaron boone doesn't have the gut he just he's just there to chew gum and win pennants and fortunately he's got a whole lot of bubble gum well, like well, you, then you look at tonight, and uh, you know they're counting on Tanaka to be Sayonara. playoff Tanaka, and uh, yeah, he, he did not pitch well. And uh, a Rosa Arena, a Rosa Arena, had, uh, had the Yankees got him out yet? He is batting well over five hundred in October. I, I mean, murdered them. I mean, re- re- I mean, uh, he, speaking of uh, a Rosa Arena, he's up again. I think he's got three hits in like. Uh, I don't know if he has an all three games, but he has three hits in at least two of these games. Yeah, no, he they haven't gotten him out. I was I was listening to the radio broadcast earlier with John and Susan, and they said uh, a Rosarena was eighteen for twenty two in the postseason, and uh, if he went zero for his next four, he would still be hitting five hundred. He's batting six thirty two in the in the postseason with three home runs and four RBIs. Yeah, he he has been unconscious and the ultimate Yankee Clipper. Uh, they really cannot find a way to figure him out right now. Um, but that pretty much, I mean, the momentum in the series totally changed yesterday. As soon as Debbie Garcia came out of the game. And, and, and yeah, Giancarlo sat and hit the ball to Mars, and it still doesn't matter because the Yankees fucked up their pitching so badly yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it, it really, um, it hasn't been. Oh, a, they finally a good got day. him out. Finally got a Rosa Arena out. But, uh, yeah, it really hasn't been a good 24 hours. And then Chad Green comes into the game tonight, and then he gets lit up. He really has not been good this year. Ottavino, too. Like, it's just like their big guys in the bullpen haven't really come through. You know, it, 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 the Yankees got what they needed in game one. They needed they, they couldn't afford that. They, they couldn't lose game one. Game one was a must win for them. And uh, they just can't find anyone – other than Cole to get these wins, and that's why they're going to lose tomorrow. It's going to be over. They're asking a lot from Jordan Montgomery to go game four down 2-1 against this, uh, this Rays lineup. Feel the heat raises. <laughs> I mean, like, he's – there's a chance, you know, obviously he could pitch very well, and it could go well, but, I mean, it's, it's, it's a big I mean, uh, the, 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 uh, the last time Rays murdered someone this bad was the uh, – Rays that murdered uh, Steve Irwin. Oh, Frank. Too soon. <laughs> oh, that's why the Yankees are now the Crocodile Hunters. They're no longer the Yankees. They're the Crocodile Hunters. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> that's dark, Frank. <laughs> Poor Steve Irwin. I, I mean, uh, in the regular season, the Rays beat them 8 out of 10. 
and, and, and this is straight owning. They, they, they straight owned the Yankees this year. Yeah, I mean, after game one, the way the Yankees beat up on the on the Rays late in the game, it looked like, all right, you know, all bets are off. It's, you know, what happens in the regular season stays in the regular season. And then the Rays really have had two very nice bounce back games to get to really just steal the entire momentum of the series. Uh, yeah, now, hopefully this year, the, 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 uh, barring a comeback from the ages, I'm going to do pretty good on this parlay I hit today. Yeah, that's uh, you had the Braves and who else was a part of your parlay? Oakland, Braves, Braves, A's and Rays and Rays. Yeah, and and you did that. You picked the A's, I know, because you didn't. You thought they'd at least win one. Yeah. And then you also, yeah, you were picking all teams who were due for a win. It seemed like. Well, the Braves, the Braves took Game One from the Marlins, but I mean, and how about Travis? I didn't Darnell? think the, I, mean, I didn't think the Marlins were going to touch Ian Anderson, and they didn't. Ian Anderson's been so good, and he's only a rookie. But sitting on the park bench, <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Uh, he's just, Jethro Tall was Ian An- Anderson. Yes. Yep. Yep. So, and 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 in other news, uh, rest in peace, Van Halen. Jeez, that's yeah. not a surprise. But he's been sick for years. Yeah, he had cancer. It was sad, but I well, just I thought of it because you said Ian Anderson and Jethro Tall. Well, if you if you ever look at the uh, every time uh, he's playing the guitar, there's a friggin' cigarette in the friggin' neck of the guitar. Yeah. And I do believe it was lung cancer that got him. Yeah, I I would I I would think so. Um, and, perhaps- and, in, and meanwhile, which McCall? Keith Richard lives. Yep. You know, I I've come to the point now where I think Keith Richards is actually a Highlander. He is immortal. He must be at this point, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's done so much heroin in his life. <laughs> I mean, the drugs that Keith Richards has done would kill anybody. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing that he's still alive. That'd Frank, be- well, yeah. I wanted to talk about that uh, Braves-Marlins series so far. Travis Darnow. Kill it. He's absolutely killing it. Like, he's the best hitting catcher in the league right now. <laughs> he was so horrible at the Mets. <laughs> they had to get rid of him. He was batting 0-50. They were stealing second and third at will. He was getting a pass ball and an error per game. He was he had more double plays than hits. I have to say, his bat speed is nothing like I've ever seen. I've never yeah. seen his bat that fast. Uh, I I'm mean, not- how how did he turn his career around? What what is it? Is it, is it really like Clark Clant taking off that suit to the, the Metro's off and it's ban dan dan dan. dan. Dan, 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 Ben, Dan, 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 Dan. I think the only explanation is that the Braves came with him and, and changed his whole approach of how to take care of his body. And he well, actually, actually he started him. last year when he was with the Rays. He had a good, like, last two months of the season with the Rays. That's right. He did. He did hit very well for the Rays when he went over there. But I now, mean, the, 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 Mets, the Dodgers got hit. The, the, the Mets sent him to the Dodgers. Uh, who was the, the bum that they got from? I don't even remember his, who that was. I'm trying to refresh who that was. Probably a shitty reliever. It, uh, it was a pitcher, I know that. Had an unusual name. He started a few games in 2019. What was his name? Font! Wilmer Font! Wilmer Font for Travis Darno. That's right. I mean, that was a horrific trade. Yeah, and I mean Darno. The thing about Darno, yeah, he was never healthy, and like and, I thought. And, was, and, and look at this, John Cross Stanton just hit another home run. That's amazing, it, and you know I'm sure you've you've heard this, and I and I've tweeted it too, but a lot of people have been saying it that Stanton right now looks like the 2009 A Rod in the postseason, getting over the hump in the Yankee uniform in October. I mean, he uh, he's just on fire. 
Now it's the bottom of the eighth. So Yankees have six more outs to score four more runs. Now, this is ben, uh, just, 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 just move on, and get the next guys out. Frank Stanton, uh, he's, he's just set a Yankees uh, record with five consecutive postseason games with a home run. I think Daniel Murphy did that. <laughs> with the Mets, yeah, he did. Um, and then, speaking of your parlay, uh, you, you had Oakland. Um, you know, the Astros have looked real good, but, oh, you know, Oakland God, stole I one. Hate the Astros. <laughs> it looks like we might be seeing, uh, well, we might be seeing Rays Astros, but if the Yankees can come back in the series, we might be seeing another Yankees Astros series. That would be interesting. You know, that would be 2020 on Brandy Astros in the World Series. Yeah, pretty much. Except Grinky's hurt, and they don't know when he's coming back. I don't think they have the pitching. But, I mean, they've, they've played well. There's well, no, the, no. The, uh, the A's up until, like, uh, the fifth inning today were, like, sleepwalking. Yeah, and then, uh, Frank, a potential free agent signing for the Mets, Liam Hendricks, had a three-inning save today for the A's. Yeah, Mets should look elsewhere. <laughs> Why don't you like Liam Hendricks? They might have their closer. Oh, Ed Luz? Those numbers actually were pretty good this year. Yeah, but I'd like to see them. Uh, it be Lugo, Ed Luz, and Liam but, Hendricks as the headed monster in the bullpen. But that's down on my list. And you know how these relievers are. One year they're good, next year they suck. Yeah, that's true. That's why you avoid giving a reliever any more than like a two year deal. Look at look at Justin Wilson. Justin Wilson was amazing last year and really. I mean, not this year. I mean, to me, I'd rather sign George Springer. I'd rather sign JT Real Muto. I'd rather sign uh, uh, Bauer. Yeah, I hope. I really hope they sign Bauer. I got a bad feeling about Bauer. Where do you think he's going to go? In stripes. I don't know about that. I don't think they can afford him. They just gave Cole three hundred fifty million. Yeah, well, and, and uh, they got some big salaries coming off the books. I think uh, Tanaka's just got a one-year contract, and I don't think he's coming back unless no. it takes a, a lower deal. Yeah, I, I think Tanaka's probably done with the Yankees. Uh, I mean, they, Tanaka, Tanaka was so ordinary this year, it wasn't funny. I think uh, Stroman might be a good signing for the Yankees. I could see that happening. And if there's ever fans in the stands, he'd be booed by every Met fan. Yeah, I, I really don't think... I don't know. Like, I, I feel like he's not going to come back. Stroman, like I don't, I know you kind of are for the Mets resigning him. I don't think he's going to come back. Uh, well, the, 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 the circumstance change could he gives the Mets a chance. I mean, he owes it to the Mets. Yeah, but I mean, you see how he is. Like he's not, he's going to go wherever the money is. You know what, though, Frank? Um, so I have a proposition for you. Say the Mets don't get JT Real Muto <laughs> as Frank's <laughs> rubbing his eyes in disgust. Um, but instead, they get Trevor Bauer. They get another decent starter like a Kevin Gaussman. And they get James McCann, the White Sox catcher, who's very good. I guess I could live with that. I think that would be a that would be. I I, I, I can't that. take another year of shitty catchers that can't hit and can't catch. If Travis get, or no, including that. If they get McCann, Frank, uh, there's really there could be a chance that they could get George Springer too. I'm sick in center field. I He's mean, I awesome I mean, I mean the yeah, Wilson Ramos. The Mets would actually would have literally been better off if Wilson Ramos opted out. Yeah, he was terrible this year. There's because no he met, he met, he, he, and he kept saying, I'm mentally not in this season. I can't get mentally in this season. But then, you know what? He should have opted out. 
Yeah, I mean, he really did not help the team out. And then, of course, Tom, you know, Thomas Nito looked pretty good at the plate, and then he got COVID, and he never came back. He missed a, over a month. That was roster-wise. He said, well, they, it seems like it was roster-wise, but the thing is, he actually said on his Instagram that it was due to complications. Oh, he actually didn't, he got hit hard then. Yeah. I follow him on Instagram. He's on private. And, uh, yeah, he, he posted something at the end of the season. He was, like, disappointed that I couldn't get back. Uh, he's like, I was, you know, I was having a good year. It felt like I was having my best year. And, uh, you know, I got COVID, and then complications didn't allow me to come back. Oh, God. And that was after, of course, he hit that grand slam. Which shocked me. Yeah, the six home runs. No, the – Two home, two homer game, grand slam, and the six RBIs in one day. But he, no, he's his swing really improved. No, he he, he really better. did look improved. Him and Luis Guillorme. I mean, I don't know if I trust Nito every day. I certainly trust him more than Wilson Ramos at this point, though. Yeah, and but there's no question. I mean, they have to bring in the starting catcher. Yeah, Nito is a good backup. So, um. Yeah, and then, Frank, we got that Padres and Dodgers series. Um, you know, the Padres, uh, it's, I, it looks like they lost They're Clevenger. They're just falling apart. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they've lost Clevenger for the entire postseason. He said that it felt like his bones were hitting the back of his elbow when he throws. That's what he said. Well, that told the Yankees got was that two and homer, and it's now on to the ninth. Yep. So the Rays are are three outs away from taking a two one lead. Um, yeah, I mean, the, Frank, the Dodgers are up one nothing, and well, they're up one nothing. The series are up four one tonight in the bottom of the fourth right now over the Padres. So uh, you know, it mm-hmm. looks like they're they're probably destined for the NLCS again. If the Dodgers don't win the World Series this year, they're, they're other failures. We've been saying that for like the last seven years, though. This year more than ever, though. They're too good. Yeah. Well, you, I know, mean, you know how Kershaw gets in the postseason. Yeah, well, maybe the fact that he didn't have to pitch a whole season, maybe he'll actually be different this year. <laughs> yeah, his body still thinks that it's like May or June right now. So he's in Cy Young form. I mean, he pitched well into the wild card, and he's winning tonight. Yeah, but it's 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 going to be uh you know it'll be an interesting finish uh you know I how do you feel about this playoff format? I don't like it. I don't like it. I want to go back to normal. Do you think we're going to see normal next year? Or do you think that they're going to stick with this? I hope we get back to normal. I just hate it. Everything about twenty twenty needs to be thrown into the dumpster. Everything. Yeah, we got to hope that it doesn't carry over to 2021. I mean, this year just has been terrible. Now, the, the Padres, now, I don't understand why the Padres switched to blue uniforms. They look so natural in the brown. Yeah, the browns are really nice. They play I mean, better in the browns. They wore the brown for 20 years, and then they switched to blue for like the last 30 years. And I, uh, and the brown, the, uh, and they had the blue and orange, which wasn't too bad. And then they had that blue and white the last like ten years. They had the boringest uniform in baseball. Yeah, and they've definitely endured a lot of losing in those uniforms too. Frank, uh, shifting over to the NFL. We, we've been waking up every morning, it seems like, with a new new alerts of more positive tests around the league. Well, how many fucking players are there in the NFL? There's like uh, 50 players per team, 20, 32 teams. I mean, with uh, 1,500 players, of course there's going to be positive tests. Yeah, and then like this whole fiasco, though, with like, uh, you know, the Patriots played on Monday and then... Stephon Gilmore. It turns out Stephon Gilmore had dinner with Cam on Friday night. And huh. 
they all the Patriots they all tested negative a bunch of times, including Gilmore, and then Gilmore tested positive. This is so screwed up. This is so screwed up. Yeah, these people that aren't sick, and and, and they, they don't get sick. They just have they just have the the virus in them. You know, you know, you know. There's something in the human body. Uh, you know, it's called antibodies. And you know what antibodies do? They kick the ass of viruses. And most people have strong antibodies. And that's why when they get the COVID, they don't feel any symptoms. Now, sometimes the antibodies could be a little worn down if you're a little older. And sometimes the fight might actually be a, be a hard fight. But those antibodies usually win. But no, nope, we have to be putting everyone in fucking bubbles. I mean, what's next? Is, is it going to be the point where if we're going to start to flatten the curve with the cold? I mean, my question is, like, Cam Newton's asymptomatic. Stephon Gilmore's asymptomatic, and they've both been tested multiple times. They, Gilmore has had multiple negatives, and then he, how did he have multiple positives? Like, I was questioning asymptomatic, but I don't know. I just, like, this whole thing now with the NFL, with these guys now, they're testing positive and they're not sick. It's just very, all very confusing. And uh, regardless of, of whether they are or where they aren't, whether the tests are accurate or not, the NFL is going to have some scheduling conflicts, it seems like. Because I don't think the Patriots are playing this week. No, oh, they're still on the schedule. They haven't announced anything being canceled yet. Oh wait, and then and then the Titans, of course. You know they had their whole thing, and uh, you know then finally everyone was negative, and then now they had two more players test positive. You know, I heard the Titans went to the same like casino, uh, late lake casino that the uh, Cardinals went to when they shut down for two months. Yeah, I so I heard that they held like a thirty person workout outside the facility, which they're not allowed to do. That's what the the NFL went to Nashville to investigate, and they found out. And, and uh, Roger Goodell doesn't have a hair on his ass. Doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Yeah, so the Titans game is not going to be played uh, this week either. There's no way they're going to be able to play a game. Then how are they they're going to play six? Are they going to play fifteen games? Or are they going to? Uh, you know what? I say if they if if their problems are self inflicted, then they should forfeit or. Just go out there, wait, uh, find some uh, XFL players, and good luck. Why don't they? They're gonna, no doubt, they're gonna need to extend the regular season by a week at least. But it's like they're complaining, like, "Oh, our bye week, like we shouldn't lose our bye week." Well, like you basically had your bye week. They had the Titans are missing. They have two bye weeks. They haven't played a game. They're not going to play see, again until week six. This is why the NFL needs to go to two bye weeks. Well, yeah, eighteen I, week schedule. It's evident this year that that would have been the best move. But they're not smart enough. Yeah, of course not. I mean, only baseball changes rules, and baseball just changes a bunch of makes a bunch of stupid rules. And this season sucked. Yep. It was the worst season in the history of baseball. Well, it was probably the worst season in the history of baseball. It was still entertaining, though, Frank. And uh, well, like, better than nothing. Yeah, I agree. But it sucked. Look at the NBA. The NBA, the NBA's finals games going on right now, and they're getting crushed in the viewership by MLB and NFL games. Don't you love that? Yeah, I don't. I don't not hate it. And keep in mind, uh, the baseball playoffs are on cable. The NBA playoffs are on broadcast TV. Maybe that doesn't mean anything anymore, but it certainly meant something 20 years ago and 30 years ago and 40 years ago. Well, fucking 40 years ago, there really wasn't any cable, but you get my point. Yeah. And just like the NBA, Frank, it's Sunday night, the NBA, uh, when Jimmy Butler dropped that 40-point triple-double for the Heat to win, when the Heat won in Game 3, the Eagles and 49ers game with Nick Mullins, the Eagles were winless and Nick Mullins was starting for the 49ers on a Sunday night football game in week four of the regular season, had 11.7 viewers, and the NBA Finals had a third of that. The NFL is king. Always will be. 
Of course. Of course. But even the MLB, too, and MLB playoffs. Like, who most sports fans are watching MLB playoff games over the NBA. The NBA well, this, 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 this shows you that no matter what ESPN does, when it, where, where sports center turns into, into NBA center, yeah, NBA NFL center, and the baseball highlights. One in five most scores in baseball: five, four, two, six, and three, two. Yeah, it really had. They really have gotten away from MLB coverage and uh, their MLB. Meanwhile, co- let's show you a three-on-three scrimmage in LeBron James's backyard. It's going to be so annoying when the Lakers win the finals. In game five and, and like the celebration and everything, because like who the fuck cares? The quality play was ass, and it was rigged for the when once they came back, it was rigged for the Lakers to win. It was rigged for the Lakers when Kobe Bryant's helicopter crashed. Oh, Frank, you're fucking delivering these low blows tonight. If if you didn't think the Lakers were gonna win when Kobe Bryant died, you're you're, you're kidding yourself. Well, that would be a nice tribute. So that, like, in when you put it that way, though, that that would make me be happy for them for winning, and like, hopefully, they honor him some more. But you, yeah, you, you just knew the NBA is the easiest sport to fix. Come on, remember it's just, Donnie? Me? It's just not. Frank, remember two thousand two? Remember the two thousand two Western Conference Finals? I don't know if you were old enough to remember that. Was that with the Sacramento Kings? Yes. Yeah. You know, when Donny He, I have not, you know, I have not gotten over that news when Donny He broke. I have not been a passionately watched the NBA since. Maybe a lot of it has to do with the Nets not being so good and leaving New Jersey. But there's a walk on every play. And if the refs wanted to, Fix a game. All they have to do is call the travels, and then the uh, the tic tac fouls. LeBron James gets gets uh, brushed, and it's a technical foul. Meanwhile, Jimmy Butler almost gets tackled, and it's play on. Well, it's just like the difference between like college basketball and the NBA. Like college basketball is actually team basketball. It's competitive. It's fun to watch. The NBA is just spot up shooting, and no defense. And uh, and uh, whoever the league wants to win wins every year. I have to say there was a certain point where the NBA was actually very fun to watch, and like it's just gotten stale for me. I would say the early 2010s, the NBA, well, late 2000s and early 2010s was a lot of fun to watch. And maybe that's maybe I'm just saying that because the Knicks were good and competitive. Well, he's and 80s, and that's when the NBA was fun. Yeah, of course, but Frank, like. 2012-2013 season where the Knicks were the two seed. They played the Lakers and Kobe Bryant in L.A. on Christmas Day. Mello versus Kobe. That was like one of the most fun regular season basketball, NBA basketball games I've ever watched. I mean, there were the, 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 it was competitive. I mean, Knicks, those Knicks-Bulls battles in the uh, 90s, those were great. Yeah. It's just like at times, like it's NBA's lost its touch, and um, I I think the the bigger and, thing and is all they do is just like LeBron, 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 fuck LeBron. The bigger the bigger thing is I think it's just the quality of play. Like the NBA is just not interesting at this time of the year. It's boring. Yeah. You know, uh, I'll flip an NBA game on, and I'll see if the game is close. If there's nothing going on in baseball, or nothing going on in hockey, nothing going on in football. And if the game's close, maybe I'll keep it on for a couple minutes. But if if there's not unless it's the last five minutes of a game, and the game's within ten points, it's not a good game. And then, then of course yesterday, freaking Tyler Hero, the worst shot he has ever made. <laughs> he screwed you. Oh yeah. Out of a parlay. No. It was just a one-on-one bet. Screwed a lot of people. Screwed Stu. <laughs> Screwed uh-huh. Stu. Screwed the president. El Presidente. The uh, spread was uh, seven and a half. And uh, the game was over. They were just dribbling out. And Tyler Hero launched a three-pointer at the buzzer. And it went in? Yes. Oh my God! And the heat, and the heat covered. It was 
A nine-point game. Game was over. Competitively over. Lakers are just getting ready to do to, to, to celebrate. And Tyler Hero just launches a, a like a thirty foot three pointer at the buzzer. With instead instead of uh, covering the seven and a half, the Heat lost by six. Jesus, <laughs> you that say, sounds like, that sounds like a you could though. say that again. <sighs> That's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, that was trending. That was trending. I think big. I think he. I think big cat even lost on that one too. Oh God! <laughs> you got to see Stu's video. Stu's going crazy. Oh, I bet. I love the videos where he screams in front of the five TV screens about yes. being screwed over. Yes. In a bit. And he's saying, and he's talking. Promise is made. Promise is delivered. And all of a sudden, he, 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 in the background, Tyler Hero's dribbling out, and all of a sudden, you see the ball go over here. Fuck. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and you know Stu probably lost a fucking ton of money off that shot that sucks yeah and I and, and I and I felt bad doing the dead ten dollar bet yeah just goes to show you um Frank, <laughs> we have some other news which you'll probably laugh about uh Dwayne Haskins was finally benched. Well, uh, did you see who's taking his spot? Kyle Allen. Kyle Allen is. And now everyone's calling it racist that Dwayne ha- Haskins was benched. And he had apparently he has better stats than Daniel Jones, even though Daniel Jones is a lot better quarterback than him. So any, anything is racist. Everything is racist. Every <laughs> single thing. Are they aware that the coach of the Red of the... Of the Washington football team is a minority himself. They don't is, care. It just is the people. only Latin American coach in the NFL right now, I believe. Actually, no, Floyd, Floyd, Brian Flores is Latin American too. So, but it, it, he's he Ron Rivera is not going to bench Dwayne Haskins just for being black. He might like Cal Allen because he was his backup quarterback in Carolina. But Ron Rivera is not gonna is not a race. Ron Rivera, that is so that is so asinine. Kyle and he said Kyle Allen knows the system better. That's why he's going with him. But like, yeah. that just well, goes to show you, Dwayne Haskins could not learn the system, which he couldn't learn last year either. That black quarterback shit is over with. It's over with. Well, the the NFL's their best the NFL's best quarterbacks are black. yes, R- Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson. Yeah, there's no more, there's no lot. People were trying to say that the black quarterback stereotype still exists because Dwayne Haskins got benched. Dwayne Haskins got benched because he's literal trash. He's terrible. If anybody uh, who has yeah. watched him play, he's uh, awful. Uh, 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 you, you see, that's racist in itself. You got to judge people how they are. Dwayne Haskins is not an NFL quarterback. No, it's just the game looks too fast for him. It looks Jeez. way too fast for him. He's just I not mean, good. He, his his mechanics around, are not good. If, if you look around the lead, I mean, Deshaun Watson's off to an 0 4 start in Boydy, Texans. Did you hear about that mess at uh, Bill O'Brien? Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, I'm, they've had a very tough schedule, though, in the first four weeks. And, and the fact that they fired Bill O'Brien after letting him trade away DeAndre, DeAndre Hopkins and their first, two round, first round and second round pick. <laughs> you know who has those picks? The Miami Dolphins. So basically, the Dolphins aren't a good team this year. I mean, they, and they've they've played well. They played, especially on Sunday. They they could have beaten the Seahawks if they were a little bit better team. Yeah, I, I mean, mean five five field goals by Sanders, and they were right there. They they, they gave them everything they could, but they just don't have what it takes yet. Having would, two top 10 draft picks will certainly help. Yes, it will. And I would be encouraged that, yeah, I mean, the Texans getting off to an 0-4 start. Imagine if they went 0-16 and the Dolphins had the first pick. <laughs> yeah. You have, you have to take Trevor Lawrence. Uh, it depends how uh, Tua plays. But you know what You know what I do? I call the Houston Texans and say, 
Give me your whole draft this year and do your whole draft next year if you want Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> uh, nah, that, they're sticking with Deshaun Watson. I he's he's proved himself. And, yeah, he's he's a good quarterback. Yeah, but I mean the thing with Tua, like obviously he's got the injury risk and uh, he hasn't played yet. And yeah, we'll see. That's why they need to see what he is too. Like imagine if they're in line to get Trevor Lawrence. I don't think they will be though. I think it's just a tough part in the schedule i mean it's bad that they lost to the vikings but well, hey, who knows too at this rate the vikings could be there for trevor lawrence and uh you know that would be a great pick uh, for them. i think there, i think there's so many teams that are worse than the vikings i'm just like i i can't wait till the draft just to see who's who's gonna get trevor lawrence this is a big week for the giants and daniel jones i think yeah i mean i'm encouraged by what the giants did against the rams um and you know that touchdown they gave up late to Cooper Cup, the blown coverage. Yeah, that's because their uh, th- so their backup free safety was starting because of injuries, and uh, he played very well. He got injured, and then he went out. So then they blew they blew the coverage because he was out on that play. And Cooper Cup just literally ran, and no one was there. But the Giants' defense really played well. They've given up two games. They've given up seventeen points and haven't won because the offense has scored a total of three touchdowns in four games. That's the Jason Garrett offense. Well, we'll see what happens to the Jason Garrett offense this week against the Alice Cowboys. Yeah, without a D, of course. <laughs> Jason, Jason Garrett. You know who stole my turn. joke? You know, I said that joke on Twitter. Who stole it? I, I said that joke on Twitter. You you saw the joke on Twitter, right? I did. Fucking Chris Rose on the NFL Network used it. Really? Yes. Did you call him out for it? <laughs> I, um, I don't know I did. Oh, no, Frank. Oh, no. What? Trevor Bauer. Speaking of Trevor Bauer, and you said you're worried he's going to go to the Yankees. He tweeted, kind of looks like the Yankees could use some more starting pitching. Interesting. That's what I saw. That I is saw not that good. yesterday. And the Yankees, that game just went final. They're down 2-1 to one in that series with uh, Jordan Montgomery on the mound to, uh, in game four. Ka-ching! 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 I love hitting parlays. Frank, how much did you win? If you could tell us. Uh, I think I won like sixty dollars. You know, keep on only about ten dollars. That's but, pretty good. It's a yeah. nice old night. That's uh, <laughs> a few trips to Rut's Hut. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, yeah, but Frank, we have a big week in the NFL. Uh, obviously. Jason Garrett's returning to Dallas for the first time, and uh, Giants, you know, need to avoid 0 and 5. Cowboys are trying to avoid 1 and 4. Uh, Daniel Jones has not played well, but the, the offense, no one's getting open either. Golden Tate is useless. Golden Tate. Should, how, it, I think the Giants should cut Golden Tate. They'll probably cut him in the offseason, but especially if no, they. No, I, I think after that fight, they should have cut him. Well, you know the backstory, right? Yeah, they ain't fighting over a girl. No, his so Jalen Ramsey dated um, Golden Tate's sister and has two kids with her and left her for a stripper in last oh, summer. Yeah. yeah, so Tate was like that. This was in the news last summer, and and Tate was like, "Well, he better hope he doesn't see me." And uh, you know, they got into it on the field, and then and then at the end of the game, apparently they had a confrontation. And uh, the word that's going around now, and this is what Joe Judge said that he heard from his players, is that Jalen Ramsey swung on Golden Tate. So you can't, I mean, you can't call. Co- yeah, call I can't blame Tate. Off. You can't blame Tate for being pissed off. He but, left- he's, but I, I, I just don't know if he's good enough anymore and worth to having on your team. No, I mean, he really doesn't do anything. Uh, Slayton had a nice catch in the end of the game over the middle. But other than that, he's kind of been dropping balls. He hasn't been creating separation. Neither of them have. Ingram had a good game on. They were running him on crossing routes, but they don't. Jason Garrett does not fucking use anybody in the vertical game. I don't understand. You have Evan Ingram. Why not fucking run him down the seams? They do not throw the ball downfield. Speaking about uh, football teams, the Jets are starting Joe Flacco this week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's crazy how Sam Darnold came back in the game. Like, they must have shot him up with something. You know, it's funny. Joe Flacco, the, the Adam Gates didn't give a fuck about any of the Jets being injured, and Greg Williams was trying to injure all the, all the Broncos. 
Yeah, that was crazy. I mean, that's what he's known for, though, bounty gate. Yeah, I mean, six offensive foul penalties, that's ridiculous. You know, at a certain point, when things like that happen, you got to find a coach. And just like what was going on in the end of the game, the Broncos were trying to just draw the clock down and throw it out of bounds, and uh, like the Jets were, Greg Williams was mm-hmm. dialing up his blitzes, having them give, give him a shot. Yeah, that's why uh, 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 Fangio told, didn't bother shaking hands, just ran off the field. Yeah, F- Fangio ran off the field, and they thought it was something maybe with Gase, but he, he clarified. He, he texted with Adam Gase after the game and uh, clarified that uh, he was pissed off about the personal foul calls, and it was obviously pissed off at Greg Williams, who has a rep- quite the reputation around the league. Yeah. So, Frank, here's a stat that you might like. I don't know if you saw it. It was from Jeff uh, Passan at ESPN. He said... MLB postseason teams are 18 and 0 this October when out homering their opponent. Yeah, I heard him talk about Ron Darling talking about that. Yeah, that's an interesting stat. I mean, it seems, uh, you know, most of the baseball, the regular season baseball games this year too, when you would out homer your opponent, you'd usually win. So. Not, which isn't actually that's not actually a good thing. <laughs> Why not? I, I just think baseball's too homer happy. I mean, the last two years it has been. I, I, I mean, I'm an old-fashioned guy. I like, I like teams that manufacture runs. Oof. Well, there's a home run. You watching the Dodgers game? Yep. Manny Machado hit a, like a low screaming line drive. Didn't go as far as I thought it went, but it was gone. Well, for Kershaw. Speak of the devil. We were just talking about him. So, so now it's 4-2 or? Yeah, 4-2. Solo home run. Lead off the, leading off the inning. Sixth inning. Dodgers leading. The Padres have got to get something back here. Well, those, those, brown, those brown uniforms look so good. Yeah, they do. You know, not that they, I like the color brown, but, you know, it's why I hated that is those black and white uniforms so much. I want color i want a variety of colors in, ba- in teams frank i don't want to get you started about the white uniforms <laughs> well the marlins black the marlins uniforms remind me of those so much i hate the marlins i have really grown to hate the marlins yeah i mean it looks like they're gonna be pretty good cheaters rebuild works yeah Ed, talk to me when they play 162 games. Yeah, well, hopefully Steve Cohen. Oh, look at that. I didn't notice that. Nasty back flat, uh, bat uh, toss by uh, Machado. Like, they, they like he off. spiked that, ball, like he spiked that, uh, that uh, bat. No, I think he's just trying to pump his team up. Frank, you know all uh, these people that take these bat flips personally, that, that that gets me. It's a different sport now. I mean, if you did that to uh, the to Bob Gibson, who of course died last week, Bob Gibson would have put you on your ass. Yeah, of course. But they don't allow that anymore. And, ooh, it's now four to three. Did someone just go deep. Yeah, Hosmer. Hosmer went deep, back to back. Back to back. What? Uh, who's broadcasting this game right now? TBS? Uh, FS1. FS1. Um, yeah, I mean, we got the final game on tonight. I really do enjoy how we've had, like, four games a day. And This, uh, this, this stadium in Texas, I don't know about this stadium. I got to see it when they get funny, finally get fans in it. I'm not too, uh, this stadium looks like it has no personality. Probably not. Well, the outside of it's ugly. They they uh, they compared it to an airplane hangar. Oh God! I used to like that old Texas stadium, the one with the. Uh, but they, they said that the uh, that it got so hot in there, like it, like the fans wilted, it, but like the old stadium. That they 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 needed a dome. They said how this it's like uh, it's a uh, in uh, Dallas. It's like uh, they get like. 100 degrees almost every day now in uh, Dallas during the summer. Yeah. So they no. have to have it. So they have to have a, They have to have a dome. It gets very hot there. Cannot imagine playing there. 
Well, you should have seen the old stadium they had. The uh, the first stadium they had it was Arlington Stadium. It was called, and they said that they that they, they, they would actually play Sunday night games in Texas before there even was an e- a Sunday night ESPN because they couldn't play any day games in Texas during the summer because of how hot it was. Yeah, I would believe it. Um, speaking of that, uh, speaking of ESPN Sunday night baseball and all their broadcasts, how bad has their broadcasting been this postseason? Awful. TBS has been the only one that's had good announced teams. Yeah, I do like how they play games on TBS in the postseason. But the, uh, the 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 announcers on ESPN have been bad. The announcers on Fox have been bad. Huh, you mean you don't like Joe Buck? Oh, Joe Buck sucks. <laughs> Frank, um, before we uh, wrap things up, want to uh, touch on a few more topics with you. Henrik Lundqvist is going to the Capitals. He's going to be a backup there. <laughs> Are you surprised? Are you surprised he's not calling it quits? Eh, eh, he still thinks he has something and someone wants him. Yeah. I mean, Marty Bordeaux made that mistake, though. Yeah. All 10 games of it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I you know, playing for one team your entire career means something. Yeah. But- yeah. But, you know, Tom Brady plays for the Buccaneers. Johnny Unitas played for the Chargers. Joe Namath played for the Rams. Yeah, that's true. Je, uh, Franco Harris played for the, the uh, Seahawks. Emmett Smith played for the Cardinals. Brett Favre played for the Jets and Vikings. Babe Ruth ended his career at the Braves. Yep. Hank Aaron ended his career at the uh, Brewers. Willie Mays ended his career at the Mets. Eddie Murray, too. Eddie Murray didn't play in his career at the Mets. Who did he, didn't he end his career with someone who, or was it the Orioles? Uh, well, he, he went back to the Orioles, and I think he went to the Angels for maybe a couple games in 97. But he went back to the Orioles in 96. He also played for the Dodgers and, uh, before he went to the Mets, and he was uh, on the Indians' 1995 World Series team. And the, uh, that's right, he was. And also um, Reggie Jackson finishing up on the Angels. Nope. Who did he end his career with? Went back to Oakland in 87. Ah. Well, Frank, um, do you want to, you know, kind of preview the upcoming week in the NFL, get with your uh, tanks picks before we and end we, the show? And, and you forgot about the most heinous one of all. Michael Jordan to Washington Wizards. Oh, yeah, that was pretty heinous. <laughs> <laughs> All oh, right, wait. here we go. Now, wait, Frank, Allen Iverson on the Memphis Grizzlies also. <laughs> yeah, there's some bad ones out there. But before we go to Tank's picks, actually, since we were on the topic of hockey, uh, are you happy with the NHL draft turnout? I know Avery is. Oh, with we'll the see what happens. Rangers, uh, another number one pick. Now, fuck the Rangers. You know what the Rangers did yesterday? What? Devils had the 17th and 19th, no, the 18th and 20th pick. They picked some guy that they wanted 18th. And they had another guy named, uh, I think his name was Schneider or something like that. Oh, and the Rangers knew about it and they traded up to 19. I did see that. Yeah. <laughs> And they, 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 they specifically did that trade up knowing the Devils were going to draft him. That's hilarious. <laughs> the rivalry's the hot. <laughs> the Fuck rivalry's the Rangers. Yeah, yeah. All right, Frank. All right. Uh, I'm going to do picks. a few picks in honor of Mike Francesa, who doesn't do it anymore. Mike Francesa, of course, quitting broadcasting for now, and who knows... But this is in the league where they play for pay. And I am picking on the Thursday night game. I am picking an upset. Bears to win outright. 
Now, I don't know what's worse, the Jets going 0-5 or the Jets winning with Joe Flacco and Adam Gase trading uh, Sam Darno and getting an extension. Huh. <laughs> and being the hell of the conquering hero. I think the Jets actually might cover the number. It's, there is seven-point home dog to the Cardinals. Just, just say that. A seven-point home dog to the Cardinals. Cardinals won the game. But I think, the, I think that game is going to be a little closer than seven points. Cardinals also, keep in mind, they're on a two-game losing streak, and I'm sure they'll get back into the groove of things against the Jets. Uh, Dolphins, they have a tough game. Jimmy Garoppolo practiced today. Looks like he's going to be back in the lineup on Sunday. I think it's going to be like last week. Uh, Dolphins will hang close but lose, and they might cover the eight-and-a-half number in San Francisco. I like the uh, I like the uh, Cowboys. They're going to put up some big numbers against the Giants. Oh, the only fine. question is if the Giants can match them. And I don't know if the Giants can match them. I think they'll get in the 30s. But I just think Dak Prescott is going to just have a field day against that Giant secondary. And I see the Cowboys covering the 9.5. Frank, the Giant secondary played pretty well. Well, it has played pretty well. I mean, Jay, uh, Bradbury. James Bradbury has been one of the best corners in the league, but you really think the Giants' offense will score thirty points? That's pretty. That's pretty optimistic. I don't. I don't know about that one. Their offense is well. Been they're playing the Alice Cowboys. <laughs> well, that's true. That is true. So, I hope so. They have a video game that's downloadable on the phone called Home Run Derby, and Pete Alonso does the commercial for it. <sighs> No more commercials for Pete Alonzo. We need him to get back in the swing of things, literally. Yeah, yeah he, needs to, he needs to hit the weight room, and uh, he, needs, he needs to uh, not go on the tank diet. <laughs> you mean the chipless diet in October? Well, my regular tank diet. <laughs> Frank, uh, you got any more picks for this week, or I didn't mean to cut you uh, off? Well, the, yeah, that is the four. Uh, let me see. Uh, Monday night, I'm going to take the uh, Saints over the Chargers in seven and a half. Sunday night, I'll take the Seahawks in seven over the Vikings. They're going to win that one. They're going to crush the Vikings. And do I have an upset week, or is the upset week going to be my Thursday game? Mm. Yeah, I'll, those will be the picks I take. Well, what about uh, Colts and Browns? You think the Browns continue this? Are they for real? or No. Colts have the uh, best defense in the NFL, and I think they'll stop this uh, Browns uh, winning streak. So um, the Odell Beckham had his best game in like, th- in, like a couple of years. That, the, the, after the Cowboys cut the lead, the, th- uh, the three points, they had all the momentum. Looked like they looked like they were going to come back and win this game. They did that pitch back to Beckham, where he uh, like uh, went ten yards back, and they looked like they had him for a loss, and then he just went right through everyone. There was one cowboy that looked like he was trying to line up a hockey check and just like instead of trying to like uh, grab him, he like tried to like body blow him, and he like missed completely. All the way onto the end zone. Yep. Yeah, that was their defense is an embarrassment, and it's Frank the Mike Nolan defense. Mike Nolan had not been a defensive coordinator since 2014, and uh, the years he was the Atlanta Falcons coordinator in the in the early 2010s, and up until he got fired in 2014, they were ranked like 25th, 26th, 27th, 31st. <laughs> and Mike McCarthy brought him onto his staff after six years of not being a defensive coordinator. A shitty one. Yeah. Yeah. Cowboys but have did, a- well, you saw the Texans after they fired Bill O'Brien, didn't you? Yeah, they promoted Romeo Cornell. The, uh, I think this is the third or fourth time he's been uh, interim coach. Yeah. He, he must hold the, lead, the NFL record for the amount of times being an interim head coach. I would not be shocked if that was the case. But anyway, uh, did you see your uh, Did you hear that? Uh, he had a that O'Brien had a blow up with uh, JJ Watt. Really? Yes. 
Where did you see that? Uh, it came out today. And yesterday on his Instagram feed, or should I say Monday on his Instagram feed, J.J. Watt pit, uh, posted a picture of the roof open in Texas and said the, 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 the clouds are gone. The, the sky is open. Whoa. Well, uh, Diana Rossini on ESPN was saying that uh, she was texting with Texans players, apparently, and they were saying that uh, you know they were starting to lose his trust in the locker room, that players no longer trusted him. And, uh, you know, when it gets to that point, then, you know, you kind of, it's the inevitable. You're only prolonging the in- inevitable at that point. So why is that Gates still coaching the Jets? <laughs> yeah, good point. Good point. Because the Johnsons don't like to fire anybody in season. Any uh, ice to tank this week? I don't know if we put, he put out the question this week. No, we don't have ass to tank this week, Frank. Um, I guess my question for you for this segment will be, uh, what do you got planned the rest of the week? You uh, you going to go and uh, do any more mini golfing this weekend? I'm going to try. I'm going to try to go out and do some mini golfing. Yeah. I mean, it's the only thing keeping you sane uh, with, with the courthouse and everything. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. I just hope this law clerk finally starts getting an idea what he's doing. Before you know it, they'll be bringing in the next person who doesn't know what they're doing. I mean, well, I've I've had I've in all my years of uh, of at the courthouse, there's a new court clerk, law clerk that comes in every year. It's a one year term, September to August, and there have been some good ones. There have been some people that are you remember. There's some people that you want to forget. People. People you just don't remember. I mean, you just see different people here and there. Some of them you see again later. Some of them become uh, prosecutors. Some of them become defense attorneys. Some of them just go into uh, private practice and do uh, become ambulance chasers. I know of uh, one uh, one law clerk that was related to uh, one of the uh, Black Sox. Really. Yep, he's like his great 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 nephew or something like that. Uh, the uh, p- in fact, he was one of the, the uh, he was the pitcher. He was related to Seacott. Oh, that's amazing. Are they a big baseball fan or no? Uh, this guy was like a big nerd. This guy, this guy was awkward. This the the, uh, the Seacott guy. He was awkward. <laughs> You're probably like, hey, your great 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 grandpa was <laughs> a part of the biggest fixed. Well, uh, I, I saw his name, and I said that, Seacott, do you know anything about the... Uh, and he goes, yeah, that's... And he said that. I mean, I've Frank. had some good ones, some really good ones, some bad ones, and some really bad ones. I mean, but this one drives me fucking nuts. Sorry to hear that. Well, it's even harder when you're on Zoom. That's what's hard. That's what part of the problem is. But he's, it's just that I don't know if he wants to get it. Or, I just don't know. Frank, um, to answer your question before, Romeo Cornell, this is only his second time, believe it or not, being interim head coach. The last time was for Todd Haley in 2011. Oh, I do. But I do. Yeah. Well, he was a he was a coach of the Browns. Oh, yeah. For, for four seasons, he was. Here's a trivia question for you. Who is the worst coach of all time, record wise? Jeff Fisher? Nope. Rick Venturi. I don't even know who that is. Rick Venturi was a coach in college football for a few years. Uh-huh. He was a coach in the and he was an interim coach twice in the NFL. In all his years, he won a total of three games. He coached Northwestern in the early 80s. And went one in thirty something. Wow. When the Colts went one in fifteen in nineteen ninety one, he took over and they and got their one win. And <sighs> when Jim Mora got fired for saying that we suck, we suck. With the Saints, yeah. When he got fired for saying that with the Saints, he only won one game out of like his last nine. Oh my god. 
So this guy's got like a record of like three and forty something. Well, if Rich Kotite was given uh, you know that long of a leash, he would have probably been the worst head coach of all time. Yeah, but this the, the, there's an interim coach to, to remember, Rick Venturi. <laughs> that's amazing, Frank. Uh, that's all the time we have for this week. Uh, please thank you to everybody for listening and remember to rate, download, review, and subscribe. Frank, if you have a song, please take us out with it. All right. Hold on a second. I just got to. Here's my tribute to the New York Yankees. <laughs> thanks for watching once again listening once again thanks for watching when i put it up on youtube on friday night click subscribe like and recommend us to your friends and neighbors